In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. It is a new month. Today is Saturday, the 1st of April, 2023. It is Saturday of the fifth and penultimate week of Lent, Church Year A. Greetings, God's good people, and welcome. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. We thank God for bringing us to this new month. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, who have made all those reborn in Christ a chosen race and a royal priesthood, grant us, we pray, the grace to will and to do what you command, that the people called to eternal life may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 21 to 28. The responsorial psalm is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31. The response to the psalm is, The Lord will keep us as a shepherd keeps his flock. The gospel is taken from St. John, chapter 11, verses 45 to 57. I read from the first reading. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the sons of Israel from the nations among which they have gone, and will gather them from all sides and bring them to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king over them all, and they shall be no longer two nations, and no longer divided into two kingdoms. They shall not defile themselves any more with their idols and their detestable things, or with any of their transgressions. But I will save them from all the backslidings in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall follow my ordinances and be careful to observe my statutes. They shall dwell in the land where your fathers dwelt that I gave to my servant Jacob. They and their children and their children's children shall dwell there forever, and David my servant shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will bless them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Then the nations will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel when my sanctuary is in the midst of them forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The theme for today's meditation is, Christ has united us to God. We must live and promote this unity. Christ has united us to God. We must live and promote this unity. Finally, dear friends, we are on the last day before we get into Holy Week. The readings of today, as it were, are a summary of what the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ mean for us. The readings are the reason for which Jesus enters into his passion. Jesus will die on the cross, not just for the sake of death, his death will mean nothing if he was just to die. 
Others had died before him. But what makes his death unique and special is the reason for which he dies. He dies to bring us salvation and to make us all one. Sons and daughters of God our Father. Jesus' death is a springboard for unity. As one man, he chose to die that we all might live. He did not die only for some or a particular people. He died for all. The collect of today, the opening prayer says, O God, who have made all those reborn in Christ a chosen race and a royal priesthood, grant us, we pray, the grace to will and to do what you command, that the people called to eternal life may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. This is what is made clear in the gospel passage of today. Caiaphas, the high priest, said, It is better for one person to die for all the people. The gospel says his words were a prophecy that Jesus should die for the nation, but not for the nation only, but to gather into one the children of God who were scattered abroad. Jesus' death was to make into one people the Jews and the Gentiles. We have been made one in Christ by his death and resurrection. Therefore, there is no longer Jew or Gentile, freeborn or slave, black or white, African, European, American or Asian, no, but we have all been made one in Christ. In the first reading, God speaks through the mouth of the prophet Ezekiel. I will take the sons of Israel from the nations among which they have gone and will gather them from all sides and I will make them one nation in the land. They shall no longer be two nations. No longer shall they be divided into two kingdoms and one king shall rule over them. Israel had been divided into the northern and southern kingdom. By this prophecy, God will reunite them. This was a prophecy of what Jesus will do. Sin had divided and separated us from God. By his death and resurrection, Jesus will reunite us to God and make us one again. The prophecy of Ezekiel is fulfilled in the gospel in the person of Jesus Christ. He is that King David who comes to rule over us all for they will have one king. Jesus alone shall be king over us all. Thus, the psalm of today says, the Lord will keep us together and united as one fold, just as a shepherd keeps his flock. In Christ, there is no east nor west, no north nor south. We must promote this unity, beloved, wherever we find ourselves. Christ has united us to God, we must live and promote this unity. Catholic, Presbyterian, Baptist, Pentecostal, we are all Christians, followers of Christ, and Christ has united us. Therefore, no reason for division. No reason, therefore, to be divided amongst ourselves. Let us pray that this unity that Christ is going to win for us on Good Friday by his death and on Easter, by his resurrection, we may live as sons and daughters, brothers and sisters. Christ did not die for some, he died for all. Christ is our brother. Therefore, we must pray and live together in love and in unity. For Christ has broken down the barriers of sin, of hatred, of division. We should not see ourselves as people from different countries, as people from different places, rather, as brothers of Christ Jesus, sons and daughters of God our Heavenly Father. May this unity that Christ wins for us by winning us back from sin and death to God the Father, may it inspire us in whatever we do and in whatever we say. We thank God for this new month and for all of you for whom this month is special. Those who celebrate birth anniversaries or anniversaries of whatever kind, we join you with our prayers. May God bless you 
and grant you many more anniversaries. Happy new month and God bless you. As you get into Holy Week tomorrow, beloved, let it be a special one for you. Let the week truly be holy by committing yourself devotedly to follow up all the events that will lead up to the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Blessed Holy Week to all of you. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.